Reacting to increased and more brutal gang activity in Polk County. Next to 10, what Sheriff Grady Judd says his gang unit has already accomplished. Plus, a Supreme Court ruling on wetlands protection, how it could affect places in the Bay Area. And Paul Delegato's take on the new 2023 hurricane season forecast. Next to 10. Coming up next to 10, it's expected to be a near average hurricane season, but Chief Meteorologist Paul Delgado explains why it all can change when we return in 60 seconds. This is really bad news for the environment and for communities like um, in our region that rely on healthy waterways. Certainly sounds like it. Now tonight at 10, the water here in Tampa Bay is vital to our tourism and our everyday life. The changes we could now expect here after a new Supreme Court ruling today. We're going after these folks who are professed gangbangers that think it's cool. They are children making adult decisions to be in a gang and to carry a gun. Tonight, Sheriff Grady Judd is telling parents there are real consequences. We cannot live in a society where pedophilia is normal. These young kids have no idea what's going on. They're being manipulated. Stronger words from another sheriff tonight for men and women who want to prey on our kids. What one 15-year-old went through at the hands of a human trafficker. You're watching Fox 13, and the 10 o'clock news starts now. Good evening and welcome tonight. I'm Mark Wilson. And I'm Allie Corey. Thanks for being with us. First tonight at 10, our water in the Bay Area is our lifeblood. We are surrounded by it. People come to visit us for it. And today the Supreme Court ruled that some wetlands are no longer protected under the Clean Water Act. And critics say that decision will cause more polluted and contaminated water. Fox 13's Justin Matthews joins us in the studio tonight. So, Justin, what exactly started all of this? Hey, Ali, a uh, brief background of the case that got us here. A couple in northern Idaho wanted to build a home near a wetland years ago. The EPA said no, essentially because the home would be too close to the wetland, and that violated the Clean Water Act. So the couple sued, and today the Supreme Court ruled in, in their favor in a 5-4 to four vote, which brings big changes to the way some bodies of water are regulated. And with this ruling, environmental advocates say they must rely on state and local governments to protect the nation's waterways. Allie. All right, Justin Matthews in our newsroom tonight. Justin, thank you. And you know, our water was a big topic today at the Tampa City Council meeting. The wastewater director updated the city about its pilot project that removes nutrients from the discharge going into the bay. They spent weeks learning about the benefits, and they say new technology is about ready to be powered up. All the equipment is now on site at our treatment plant. They put it together, hooked up all the electrical, plumbing, piping. Um, so we're about one week away from starting it up. Uh, the whole process should take about four to six months. So starting in June, ending October. Well, they say this technology is expected to increase the quality of water coming out of the treatment plant to the bay. Once they are done with the pilot project, they should have a full report for the city by December or January. So it's no secret, kids and guns just don't mix. But in Polk County, there's another dangerous ingredient to an alarming crisis here. Earlier this month, a 13-year-old is accused of shooting at a Lakeland police officer who was investigating the teen's gang activity. And it's one of the reasons the sheriff started this gang task force that they have there to cut down on crime, often impacting innocent victims. Well, tonight here at 10, he told Fox 13's Jenny Lewis that these adult choices are coming with real-life consequences. Sheriff Judd also told Janae in the short time this task force has been in operation, they've already taken 40 guns off the streets. Meantime, in Tampa, a jury has found accused drug dealer guilty of giving a man a lethal dose that led to his death. But they did not find Joseph Stilitano guilty of murder. Instead, they said he committed manslaughter in the death of Joseph Septon. He died from a lethal mix of heroin and fentanyl. Stilitano's sentencing is now set for June 8th. And now to a deeply disturbing case in Pasco County. A teen girl is rescued from human trafficking. And tonight, four men who the sheriff says victimized her are under arrest. Fox 13's Haley Hines joins us to break down the case. And Haley, investigators believe there may be more victims. Yeah, Ali, that's right. The sheriff says cases like this are among the most devastating that they deal with. And sadly, they fear this girl was just one of several put through absolutely horrific manipulation and sex crimes. But they are praising her for speaking up because they believe she helped save other young girls 
going through the same thing. As for the teen girl in this case, we are told she has a long road ahead, but she is healing and she is surrounded with support. Again, the sheriff believes there are more victims out there and she, he is encouraging them to reach out to the sheriff's office or call FDLE's human trafficking hotline at 855 FLA safe. It's just so disturbing, Haley, and to think that we hear about these cases quite often. All right, thanks, Haley. Well, developing tonight, Florida troops have arrived at the border in Texas. Governor Ron DeSantis says they are ready to help stop migrants from crossing illegally. The National Guard, FDLE, Florida Highway Patrol, and Florida Fish and Wildlife all responded. U.S. Custom Border Protection agents tell us illegal crossings are actually lower. As of Monday, they saw an average of 2,900 crossings a day. That's down from 10,000 a day. Well, a mother wasn't sure if her child was ever going to make it home. He nearly drowned at the beach. Yeah, it was a good Samaritan, though, who ultimately saved his life. The training she just received that helped him, helped her rescue him. Plus this. We ask people not to uh, wait till the last minute, not to judge the previous storms on what's coming now. Hurricane season right around the corner. It is never too early to prepare. How you can save money on your hurricane kit this weekend and Fox 13 Chief Meteorologist Paul Delegato shares what we can expect this season. You know, we may not want to think about it really, but it's something we need to. Hurricane season begins next week. Here we are already. On this weekend, you can save some money while preparing for it. The disaster preparedness sales tax holiday begins first thing tomorrow. And shoppers are not going to have to pay any sales tax on a variety of storm-related supplies. So what kind of a hurricane season first is in store for us? Well, no one just predicted this, saying it's going to be near average. What does that mean? Well, it means it's Florida. This is a little welcome news, perhaps, but we don't want to let our guard down. Fox or Chains' Kylie Jones has been looking into this for us tonight. Joins us now live in Tampa. Hi there, Kylie. Uh, we know it only takes one hurricane nearby, of course, near us to make it an active season for us. Yeah, Mark, absolutely. And the resounding answer from all officials is that this really shouldn't change the way you plan or prepare. Even our chief meteorologist, Paul Delegato, saying things could look completely different come August. And hurricane season officially starts a week from today, June 1st. It runs through November 30th. Live tonight in Tampa, Kylie Jones, Fox 13 News. And now, Fox 13 Chief Meteorologist Paul Delegato with your Sky Tower Radar forecast. Say the best thing I, I think about these preseason hurricane forecast, it gets people talking about the upcoming season. Again, just one storm, it's a bad season. I had some storms today. Uh, thunderstorms over South Tampa. Andrea Walker, we were busy all afternoon tracking a locally heavy rain, some small hail, even a couple of water spouts uh, off our west coast. Rain in Sand Key. And today, by the way, marks the, I guess, kind of the unofficial start uh, of the rainy season. We use May 25th as that day. Look at this. Uh, dying thunderstorms over at Englewood. This is the time of year where until we get some incredible skies, some incredible views. It always seems like we somehow finagle a good sunset despite a mostly rainy afternoon. Uh, buddy Lance Rabb up in Carrollwood. Uh, that's a great view, Lance. Uh, White Trout Lake. Uh, check that out on my Facebook page. 70. Look at the low clouds hanging over the city. This is kind of a byproduct of the clouds or the rain we had earlier today. Rain now kind of shifting to the east coast. Water on the camera lens uh, in Orlando where it's raining and 73 degrees. Yeah, today's rainfall distribution a little bit different than yesterday. Yesterday was mainly Tampa Bay and south and west. Today the jackpot sections of Polk County where Doppler estimates were over five inches in places also Heavy rain along the coast of Pinellas. Largo got hit hard again today. Decent rain in Sarasota. In fact, just about everybody had rain. Good soaking, long lasting rain up in Citrus County. You know, don't forget, this is, I mean, this is literally just the start of a long, long rainy season. So you take, take days like this, you kind of add them up, and before you know it, the big rainfall deficit is no longer a deficit. 
Here's a check on Sky Tower now. Areas of light rain continue, but this will all be ending next couple of hours. Still, though, raining pretty good in western Polk County. Bartow, steady light to moderate rain. Raining in Lakeland, Winter Haven, Auburndale, Polk City, Haines City, Davenport, Claremont, all the way over to Orlando. Again, this will gradually wind down as you lose the heating of the day. The weather map, I mean, this, it, it, the fact that we had rain and storms, yeah, I mean, it, Rain, lightning, it's still though, the weather map is not a true summertime setup. You know, we don't have fronts like this in July and August, low pressure over the Everglades. So this is added to the instability. What's gonna happen for the weekend is this low is gonna end up moving up towards the Carolinas and what it essentially will do is drag down lower humidity, less water content of the atmosphere. So the rain machine gets flipped off in the weekend should be mainly dry. When did it start raining in Tampa? How about 86 at 3 and 77 at 4? So right there now is 72. All of these numbers are rain cool. Look at Lakeland, 68 degrees uh, as of 10 o'clock. Showers done tonight. There'll be a few storms tomorrow, but I think the rainfall coverage decreases tomorrow. Then on Saturday, I think it's mainly dry with lower humidity. This is the key to the forecast. Watch the yellow and brown kind of spin in from the north and northwest. This is lower water content in the atmosphere, so I think we're rain-free. Most, if not all, of the weekend, we're dropping dew points. Look at the dew points. Uh, they may get into the 50s for a time on Saturday. Uh, that's that's a that's an unusual setup for the Memorial Day holiday. Shower storms ending, they're about done now, 70. There'll be a few back tomorrow, highs in the mid-80s. A smidge less humid on Saturday, Highs in the mid 80s, not 90, mid 80s, dry on Sunday, Memorial Day dry, and then we start warming up and showers, thunder showers make a comeback as you move into early June. That's it. We'll see you again about 1045. All right, Paul, thanks. We well, you know these two men consider themselves brothers. They grew up together, had their first dates together, and even served the country together. And now they're getting a chance to celebrate their service with an honor flight together. What this means to them. I bet quite a bit. Looking forward to that. Also trapped in their own home while one couple says they have no way to leave their condo. They're trapped. We try to get some answers for them when we come back. Tomorrow, meet a USF professor who broke the world's record for the longest time living underwater. See why that feat has led to breakthroughs in the study of brain injury treatment. Plus, this guy is familiar with life below the water and above it, too. Captain Dylan Hubbard with the Good Catch for you. The Friday before Memorial Day weekend, perfect time to visit the American Victory ship on Good Day Tampa Bay. Fox 13 Sky Tower Radar is sponsored by Farah and Farah, Tampa's accident attorneys. If you've been injured, we're prepared and ready to help. Call Farah and Farah anytime. We can't do anything with doctors or dentists or anything. Everything has to be canceled. Poor thing, you can see it in her face. She's scared to death. An elderly couple in Clearwater left trapped, unable to leave their third floor condo because of a broken elevator. That is 86-year-old Evelyn Menzi. She tells us today that she assumed the broken elevator at the Villas at Countryside would be fixed, maybe within a couple weeks. That's still a long time. But sure. when she called building management, get this, they told her that it wouldn't get fixed for about 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. Evelyn says, frankly, coastal property management blames the delay due to a missing part. Well, her condo building has stairs, but her husband is 94 years old, making it nearly impossible for the two of them to get up and down. There are people on this floor that have oxygen like I have, and uh, they are on walkers, and they can't get anywhere. Fox 13 has reached out to the property management group. The woman who answered our call says they have no comment. Well, millions of student loan borrowers are still in limbo, wondering if their slate will be wiped clean. Yeah, the movement happening in Congress right now that could decide what happens next. Plus this. And I'm screaming for help. Somebody help me help my baby. A woman thought her child was never coming home after nearly drowning, but her friend knew exactly what to do to save his life. The rescue story is next.
So this weekend, a lot of you are probably going to plan to hit the water, whether it's the beach, neighborhood pool, your own pool. County leaders say you're going to want to keep a close eye on your kids, though. This goes without saying, but the CDC says drowning remains the leading cause of death for children from one to four years old in the U.S. At least one adult should be keeping an eye on the children at all times, and somebody nearby should be CPR trained. Now, it was a vigilant adult who changed the course of a family's life at Sebastian Inlet on Florida's east coast. A four-year-old nearly drowned at the beach, but as Fox's Esther Boyer reports for us, a family friend who just learned CPR was there to save the boy. Pretty incredible. Briar, thankfully, um, is going to be okay. Does have a long road to recovery, but he's making small steps toward progress. Today, by the day, was the first day he was able to start eating again. Mm, thank goodness. Well, you know, millions of people are waiting for uh, a response from the Supreme Court whether or not their student loans will vanish. But House Republicans voted against it, putting a major blow to President Biden's forgiveness plan. Now, the House voted to overturn the student debt relief program, sending the measure to the Senate. Republicans argue the president's proposal to cancel Cancel between ten and twenty thousand dollars in student debt is unfair, and money the nation just can't afford right now. At some point in time, somebody's got to pay these bills, and Washington can't keep spending money it doesn't have. The president's plan is a good one; it's a popular one, and it will help prevent borrowers from default when loan payments restart this summer. Well, the White House says if the House's resolution should pass in the Democratic-led Senate, the president will veto it. Well, the founder of the Oath Keepers will spend 18 years behind bars after he was found guilty of seditious conspiracy today. This is for his role in the attack on the Capitol January 6th. A judge ruled that his actions amounted to domestic terrorism, saying he was one of the ones giving orders. Meantime, the leader of the Florida chapter of the Oath Keepers was sentenced to 12 years in prison. That is Kelly Meggs. He's from Dunellen in Marion County. When he spoke to the court, he apologized, saying his life and his family's lives have been destroyed. Well, Americans are not getting any younger. The median age in the U.S. is getting older. We're going to explain why and where you stack up to the rest of America. Plus this. It's quite a story of how we got together and how we met girlfriends, got married, and here we live happily ever after. It's a, it's a fairy tale. Sounds like it. These veterans grew up together, went through life's toughest moments together, even served in the war together. Now they're getting a chance to honor the fallen and take their first trip to D.C. when we return. I'm Mark Wilson. We're proud to honor and remember America's fallen war heroes. Over the next half hour, we've got some special stories to share with you. Join me Memorial Day for a special Fox 13 salutes. The stories of those working to preserve our veterans' memories and make sure the next generation does not forget. Fox 13 salutes Memorial Day, Monday evening at 5.30. Well, here's what's coming up all new tonight at 11. It is a case that became a flashpoint in the national abortion debate. The disciplinary hearing for an Indiana doctor who performed an abortion on a 10-year-old rape victim. We'll tell you how that's going. Plus... It's just being a good human being at the end of the day. An off-duty firefighter taking in a baseball game in D.C. ends up saving a fan's life. And the cool part is he was only in D.C. because he was getting an award for saving another life. You'll meet the hero with the perfect timing tonight on the Fox 13 11 o'clock news. Allie? Wow, looking forward to that. All right, Chris, thanks. Well, it is Military Appreciation Month, a time to honor those who served our country. And these two veterans here, they have been friends for years. They grew up together on the same street and decided to enlist together. And now decades later, they're planning to participate in the same honor flight. Fox's Christina Carilla shares their story. Wow, what a story. It's an incredible trip that everybody who takes those trips, you know, they're so touched mm -hmm. by the emotion that they all feel and they think about all the names of the family members who aren't there to memorialize right. them. It stays with them for a long time and it's a great way to, uh, to let them know we're not going to forget mm -hmm. all their sacrifices, you know. Yeah, we we'll thank them for their service. Sure, sure indeed. Hey, Scott. All right, coming up in sports, guys. The Bucks preseason schedule released today, and it includes several days of joint practices against one of the most intriguing teams in the NFL this season. Plus, the Rays, they can get you a number of different ways. Pitching, power, speed. Today was the latter. Rays burning up the base paths to pull off a series win against the division rival Blue Jays. Sports coming up.
Rays wrap it up a four game series against the Blue Jays this afternoon with a 6 3 win, taking three of four. And through the first three games of this series, we had 13 combined home runs. So seven by the Jays, six by the Rays. But today, nada. I'd say a, a pretty good way to end the school year for those guys. Congrats to the Griffins and everybody else that's bringing home the hardware. Paul? Great stuff indeed, uh, Scott. What a day we had today. Check this out. Uh, water spout kind of develops right near Tierra Verde. Uh, up by Shell Isle, and you, you can see the spin. I mean, this is pretty impressive stuff. This is really a sign that the rainy season is here. When you start showing water spout videos along the coastline, no damage, but as soon as that water spout goes on shore, technically, that's a tornado. And then it just quickly dissipated. Lots of oohs and ahs. A lot of good video coming in. I uh, appreciate that. Kevin Schaefer. Uh, let's get back to what's happening outside now. None of that. The low clouds over the city. Probably some low clouds for a time tomorrow morning. 70 on the Bay Shore. Rain is still ongoing. Just a lot of instability uh, in the atmosphere. Just a, a big line of none of this is severe. It's just steady. The, the type of rain on the roof that's nice to go to sleep to. All the way from up by Jacksonville, running through Groveland and Kissimmee and Davenport, Lakeland, Auburndale, Bartow, nothing severe. Little pockets of some moderate rain in the mix, and eventually this will kind of rain itself up. But it's got a little ways to go, and all of this is great news. Kind of adding to the rainfall totals we've seen the past three days. Temperatures are rain cooled. How about a 68 in Brandon? How about a 66 in rainy in Lakeland? This is the kind of nights when you can get record low temps. We don't get really get a lot of record low temps in the winter time because cold fronts go by. A lot of the times, uh, record low temps because it's just rain and, and, and cool air coming down from above us. So 66 in Lakeland, and probably pretty close to a record low. 68 in Brandon, 72 in Tampa, 73 in Newport Ritchie. Couple of more showers develop tomorrow, but I think the trend will, f will be for lower rain coverage and then on Saturday and for that matter Sunday and Monday dry air filtering down the state we got 60s and low 70s tonight we have temperatures on the cool side tomorrow in the mid 80s with some showers and thunder showers developing look at this uh, dew points drop into the 50s we're not talking winter like dry air but enough that should be noticeable Saturday into Sunday looking ahead uh, above normal temps uh, early June as far as rainfall goes a chance of above normal rainfall. All rain is good. Take a little break, and uh, we're back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Fox 13 Sports is sponsored by the law firm of Catania and Catania, putting families first. Fox 13 is proud to be the official weather partner for the Tampa Bay Rays. Whether the Rays are playing at home or on the road, knowing the Sky Tower radar forecast will always be a hit. New tonight, America is growing older. It's aged rapidly in the last decades as baby boomers grew older and births dropped. New census figures released today show that U.S. residents age 65 or older ballooned by more than a third between 2010 and 2020. But the amount of children declined, particularly ones under five years old. Right now, the nation's median age is 38.8. Mm, all right, it's about to be a busy travel weekend. Airport Airport security checks are going to be a little bit easier for families, hopefully. TSA is allowing teens ages 13 to 17 to accompany their parents or guardians in pre-checks. So yeah, mom and dad got the pre-check, kids don't bring on the kids. Teens have got to be on the same reservation though, and they've got to have a TSA pre-check indicator at least on their boarding pass, but the agency says the change is to make the process a little easier for low-risk travelers and put more focus on the high-risk travelers. Meantime, more and more people are exploring the world of uh, Cruising. The Wall Street Journal says occupancy levels topped 100% on many ships. Occupancy rates are based on two people in a cabin that can't exceed 100% if three or four passengers do stay together. You're likely to see long lines for activities on board, sold out excursions, and in some cases, cruise lines are canceling some trips after overselling. But when they wow. do that, I actually just heard from a friend who said that happened to them. Uh, they got a free cruise out of it. Said, would you mind? Can we have your room back? Uh -huh. We'll give you a free cruise later. So you almost hope that That's you're that happened. person that was It's just like you bumped off the too. airplane. Yeah. Please bump me. Yeah, I'll I don't take need the to credit. Be at work. Yeah. <laughs> a paralyzed man's able to stand, walk, and even climb stairs again. We'll find out about the amazing technology that's making it possible for the first time ever. It's good stuff after this.